How's it going guys? Welcome back to Blue City and welcome back to the house of Father Morgana. What I've noticed? I need a haircut. You know what's not gonna be happening anytime soon? Getting a haircut. <laughs> it's not looking like it's gonna be in our near future. Honestly, I might just go buy some hair clippers and <laughs> that might be the best way for me to do it. But uh, yeah, also I'm in one of my older shirts, but you can kind of tell because it's like a little mini tent on my, my whole frame, but you know, it's all good here. And let's just jump back into Fata Morgana. So, last time we have been following the Swordsman's story. And, again, I can sympathize. I really can. He's a broken person. Like, he came broken. He went through a horrible life. Easy could see that he could have resentment towards people, but it doesn't seem like that's his motivation. It's simply this inner, like, violence that he's always had. And so it's like, I don't know. I don't know what to think about him. But this is the turning point um, where he's going to meet the Lord Jacopo, or whatever he's called here. And this is where everything spirals out of control. And we should see how all this plays together, ultimately leading us to modern day. So I have a feeling that this episode we're going to be completing this story, probably a little bit after story. Maybe finding out what the resolution is between the Swordsman and um, uh, the Nun you know, uh, Paulina. So, yeah, I don't expect this to be very fun as usual, but it'll be insightful and interesting. Also, by the way, a quick announcement. I always try and do something fun for April Fools. Keep that in mind. Not saying at all what it is, but I am recording it after this and I'm really excited. So keep an eye out for it. Hopefully it'll be a way to bring some laughs and smiles and something just a little different to the channel. Plus some really good announcements, I guess you could say. Because uh, things are going to be kicking off here on the channel in the near future with some uh, new stuff I'm going to be tossing into the, to the ring of things. So buckle up for that. But anyway, let us jump right back into the story. <clears throat> I take it you are the oriental man who's been seen buzzing around the local church of late? When I first saw the Lord, I was surprised by just how young he looked. There couldn't have been any more, more than a couple years difference between us. I had envisioned him as an elderly, or at the very least, middle-aged man. That would be me, yes. What of it? Who do you think you're talking to, impotent rat? Show some respect. Oh, channeling his own little, uh, Gilgamesh, you know, fate Gilgamesh. <laughs> Mongrel. Apologies, I'm not familiar with the local customs or language. Hmm. Very well, then. You are fortunate. I'm such an understanding man. Now, for the reason I called you here. You're the one who killed that car cart full of slaves four years ago, aren't you? How on earth did he know that? So you know about that. Ha! <laughs> I wasn't actually sure it was you, but now I have confirmation. Well, fetch. <laughs> Since then, one slave of Far Eastern origin has remained unaccounted for. I take it that would be you. That's right. You made one heck of a mess out there. Am I here to be punished? That depends on how our talk goes. If you think I'm going to be going back to being a slave, you're fooling yourself. I don't need any more darn slaves. I certainly don't want you as one. You're obviously not finding any, finding any respectable work, being an ex-slave, so I take it you're still in the business of getting your hands dirty, are you not? I assume you're playing cart burglar or something, living off whatever you can swipe from the nearest unlucky bars? Or people. Correct. Isn't it comical, then, that you would choose God's sacred house to stretch your legs in, you filthy dog? I absolutely agree. I thought that would get a reaction out of you, but it seems you've got no bite in you today. <sighs> Never mind, let's get down to business. You're going to help me out with a little something I'm working on. Help you with what, exactly? Something that's going to make me a lot of money. And if you lend a hand, I'll make sure you're well taken care of. Along with the church you're so fond of, and the nun you've taken a liking to. Man, he's really, really well informed. That nun of yours would make quite a name for herself. Out of the city proper, people have started calling her the Saintess. They're right about that. 
She is. Ha! <laughs> the commoners love their heroes and saints. They eat that rubbish right up. But, saint or not, you can't simply create food from nothing. Her work is causing financial troubles for the church, is it not? It is, yes. If you help me with this, I'm offering you an entirely new church. One where she has complete control and to, to, and to do as she wishes. She'll make it, to the, make it into the biggest church in the city. She'll be able to help even more people, which should surely please her. What would you have me do? Jump into the first whiff of scraps? You really are a dog, aren't you? I don't like conversations that overstay their welcome. Hmm, fair enough. Then let's get to business. Not far from here lies a witch whose blood has the power to cause miracles. Miracle blood? That sounds like a sham to me. You never know. They say the sound of her first cry brought rain to the land where she was born, saving a whole village from drought. And they say her blood has the power to cure any disease. I'll worry about the veracity of the rumors later. Right now, all I want is for you to capture and bring her to me. Explain something to me, Lord. You say that if I help you, then I will be able to save more people than she does now. So how does capturing this witch accomplish that? I'm glad you know how to listen, dog. We'll be turning the blood into a miracle elixir, which she will then distribute to patrons of the church. In exchange for tithes, of course. Selling it, then. Selling isn't quite the word, the right word, but if that's how you want to think of it, by all means. The commoners believe Saintus, handing out all-powerful miracle medicine. They'll lap it up. And in turn, you'll make a fortune. Exactly. Money I can use to support her church. It'll be a boon to the city's economy as well. A single witch's freedom is all it costs for everyone here to come out happy. So what'll it be? Will you help? Or will I have to... I'll help. I have no reason not to. He's like disappointed. Decisive and a good listener. Excellent. Once I've captured the witch, where do I take her? I have a mansion set aside for your nun can run her church. There's an observation tower on the grounds. The witch will be kept locked up there to ensure she will have a constant supply of blood. Okay. When do you want me to get her? You're just chomping at the bit now, aren't you? I thought you'd hesitate at least a little. I guess it was foolish of me to presume you'd understand how a killer's mind works. All the resources I put into investigating you and everyone close to you was wasted, it would seem. Do you even have a conscience? Don't act like you're any different. I assure you, I have a conscience. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't necessary for the growth of the city. No, I mean you're as much a murderer as me. You would never come up with a scheme like this if your hands were clean. Watch your mouth, dog. Don't you dare insinuate I would ever cons condescend to your level. Interesting. So he sees himself as some kind of paragon somehow. I agree to the Lord's terms. A couple days later, I made way to the location the Lord had given me, a small cottage by a lake, where the witch was said to live. I had been instructed to take her alive, but not that I wasn't allowed to harm her, so my plan was to force my way in and immobilize her as soon as she opened the door. The Lord was right. I didn't have anything resembling a conscience. I was, far too go I was too far gone to be bothered by the prospect of disabling a witch. Not even the fact that I had found a degree of solace in my relationship with Pauline would change that. Dang. He's just like, I'm not human. I just happen to be willing to be nice to this one person because I like her and she's my tether. However, who's there? When I heard the witch's voice through the door, I froze. It was the girl from four years ago earlier. I didn't even have to see her. I knew right away. I wouldn't mistake that voice, the stream of pure, clear water cutting through the grime for anything. I would never forget the first thing that had ever managed to suppress my desires. My first tether. When the Lord told me about the witch, I never once expected it to be her. Who is it? 
Are you the witch with the miracle blood? My hand rested on the hilt of my sword. I had at first meant to break down the door that she wouldn't open it for me. Please leave. However, when I heard that voice, my hand fell limp. Please stay away from my home. I am in need of your blood. Could you not spare a little? I have nothing to spare for a man like you. My blood is only for the sick and needy. So please, go away. Stay away from me. I'm begging you. Get away from this place. You're a murderer. I want nothing to do with you. So please, just go away. As you say. As she commanded, I took my leave of her cottage in somewhat of a haze. It should have come as no surprise, but in four years since our last encounter, she had not no kind words left to spare me. Yet even in her derision, I felt myself being calmed by the sound of her voice. I debated with myself. Should I do as the Lord requested and capture her? Or should I let her go free, as I had done four years earlier? You already know what I decided to do, though, don't you? That's right. I went with the first option. After all, I had no need for two tethers. God, that's such a stupid reason. While breaking down her door was still an option, the witch was wary of me. If she were to somehow manage to escape, there's no saying how the Lord might react. So I stood watch, waiting for her to step outside. The problem was, she never opened her door. It wasn't just me, it seemed she was very wary of everyone. How did she eat? I can't remember. There was one exception, though. The boy. She left the cottage for him. They went on walks together around the lake. It's, uh, it's been a while since we last went on our walks, huh? I, I haven't been sleeping much, taking care of Nelly. Is her condition worsening again? Yeah. Rest assured, I will give her my blessing as many times as she needs. Ah, thanks. I really, really appreciate it. The weather's kind of... not that great today, huh? Looks like we might get rain. It's probably not smart to stay outside much longer. Yesterday? I should get going. See you. How sad. I hated that. It was the beginning of the end, truly, but like, still sucked to watch. Watching the two of them, it occurred to me that I could make good use of the boy. You have two options. Either you say no and protect the witch. Get away! Will you help me capture her? Get, get away from her! Right now! And if you choose the witch, I kill the girl. Get away! Make your decision. Get away from her! You'll have until the count of ten. If you don't choose, I kill the girl. Uh, ten. Nine, eight, seven, uh, six, five. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll help you to get your sword out of her face. Don't kill her. I thought you'd hold out until the last second. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's get going. Oh, poor Mel. Get moving. You pitiful little boy. Oh, excuse me. Aww. Poor Morgana, too. Get back! No! Stay away from me! No! Ah. Poor Mel. Help! Don't... don't kill me!
Take it. What? That's your share. Should last you long enough. Gah! Why? 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 Why did, did you t take my arm? What uh, do you mean by share? Why? Poor Mel. My, my arm. I don't want to do it. Like, I really think I could do a decent job with the voice acting, but it's like, it's again, it's that barrier of like, there's people sleeping. <sighs> Part of me wishes I could have the resources to record without anybody around, but that's just not the case. Poor Morgana. Oh, excuse me. No! Put me down, please! Help! Someone, please help! The witch was a witch with the miracle blood had regressed into an ordinary girl, and she cried in pain like a small child. I wasn't going to get very far through wailing, so I gagged her, tied her up, and threw her into the burlap sack. How did she keep her from bleeding out? Nothing personal. I just need your blood. Small comfort. Without it, she'll lose her church. She needs the money. I need some way to get enough money to keep her church running. So the Lord made me an offer. If I brought him the witch with the miracle blood, he would finance the whole new church for her. So don't take it personally. I tossed the sack into the cart I had waiting outside, then made my way to the mansion as per the Lord's instructions. The two of us then locked, locked the witch in the observation tower. When I told the Lord I had used the boy as bait to get her to open the door, he gave an exas exacerbated sigh and said, <sighs> Involving a third party was not part of the plan. Is there anything at all in that head of yours, dog? I can kill him, if that's a problem. Don't be hasty. Describe him for me. Did he seem like he came from a wealthy family? He's young, still in his teens. He lives with his little sister. He looks reasonably well off, probably of noble blood. You have to take one heck of a target to use as your bait. Should I kill him? There are people in the world you can make disappear quietly. People no one will notice have gone missing. You are one of them. The boy, he most likely isn't. God, was the boy at all interested in the witch's blood? He seemed to be. Well, that makes things a little easier. We just have to make him into an accomplice then. So it was just out of necessity. They literally would have killed him if they thought they could have gotten away with it. That's everything up to about six months ago. You know what happened next, I presume? I thre threatened Mel, forced him to join us. He needed the blood for his sister, but even without that excuse, he didn't have the courage to run. Me, on the other hand, I involved myself in, only, uh, involved my, in yeah. I involved myself of my own will. I held no reason to try and get back out. In fact, being put in charge of one of these three keys gave me an excuse to meet up with her more often. The arrangement was quite beneficial for me. Hey. I heard the news. You were selected to be part of the Lord's personal guard. Now you've got a maid. Congratulations. You're exaggerating. It's nothing. Oh, now? We no need to be humble. He wouldn't have picked you if he didn't really trust you. Everyone around here knows just how hard it is to earn the Lord's trust. If you say so. It, has been, it hasn't been easy for him, I hear. He only assigns those he really trusts to work so close to him. <laughs> I hope you're right. He trusts you. I'm sure of it. I certainly can't tell her the real reason I suddenly became his guard. And I've got some more exciting news, too. 
The Lord sent a messenger for me earlier. Apparently he's building a new church. He wants me to serve as the nun there. Can you believe it? You shouldn't be surprised. You are the city's Satis, after all. It's a little wonder you would be his first choice. I really don't think I'm that important. Do you not want the position? No, no. I'm delighted to have such an incredible opportunity. This will allow me to help so many more people before then. It's... it's wonderful news. That's good to hear. Tell me, I'm not wrong in thinking helping people is the one thing you want more than anything else, am I? Right. That's what I want more than anything in the world. I see. Interesting. So we're seeing a parallel. Mel and the swordsman both had a failing, a critical failing. They did not understand what their true loves, what their passions wanted in life. Mel assumed that he, she wanted a prince, somebody who would take care of her, pay for her, and help her, like, you know, live the dream that she wasn't really had been kind of removed from because of their circumstances. But she didn't want that. She just wanted Mel. The nun wanted to escape. She wanted to have a life beyond the walls of the nunnery. She wanted to have the the chance to be able to be her like a set herself, but lacked the courage or conviction to do so. But what she genuinely wanted was the man that she'd fallen in love with to take her away, to give her the life that she'd always wanted but never thought she could have. And he didn't understand that either. To be fair, I don't think they had a reason not to believe that. I mean, they were pretty much told straight out the opposite of what was actually true. Hard to really work your way through the logic of that one. Hey, um, smile for me, would you? Huh? I've been smiling this whole time, haven't I? Not just now. Forever. Of course. When I'm with you, nothing could possibly take the smile off my face. I'm glad to hear it. What a broken man. I never knew someone could lose so much weight while still eating every day. You might have to increase your portions. If there's anything in particular you want, just tell me. I hear... children's voices. Hmm? From outside, I hear children's voices. Ah, the kid's here to see the Saintus. It has gotten quite noisy out there of late, yes. Oh. The Saintus. Your voice has gotten raspy too. Was that my doing? Did I take your voice? That's unfortunate. To me, your voice held far more value than your blood. And I took that away from you. Yes. You three took everything from me. So we did. Enough chatter, dog. The Lord's scheme was a success. The witch's blood brought with it an influx of donations, which the Lord invested in various businesses in the city. I have no idea if the blood actually has miraculous powers, but there were certainly people claiming it had to have been healed by it. It wasn't long before people who weren't sick started making use of the supposed cure-all medicine, saying it had preventative properties as well. Uh, world, uh, as word of the elixir spread, the Lord's prophets grew in kind. One fact was undeniable. The witch's blood simulated the city's dynamic growth. All in the name of prophets, huh? That was shorter than I thought. I thought we had more than that to left to cover of it. <sighs> and that's everything. Appalling, is it not? Morgana. If you hate me for what I did to her, you can take the sword and kill me with it. And you can have my key. I won't put up a fight. You have the right to exact punishment on me. 
killing you would accomplish nothing. It is neither my place to forgive nor punish you. As much as it would make me feel better, doing so would serve no meaningful purpose. I would like you to give me a little time, though. I need time to cool down enough that I can talk to you with a clear head. Of course. So you are willing to speak with me? I gave you my word. I told you I would help you figure out what your path should ta you should take. You're an honorable man. I will not force your hand if you do not want to do this. You can tell me to leave and I'll walk right out the door. More than anger or hatred, I'm simply deeply pained. Maybe things would have turned out better if I were as sympathetic a man as you. People are supposed to be able to feel happy or sad for each other. I can't, though, which must make me a beast. It's crazy. It's kind of funny to think about because, like, uh, he's talking about psycho, psycho, psych being a psychopath, I believe. There's a sociopath and then psychopath. And I think the difference is sociopaths don't really empathize. If I remember correctly, like they don't really know how they can pretend, but they don't really know like that. Just part of them, just not really a big part of them. A psychopath is somebody who just doesn't feel like a sociopath still knows things are wrong, but they don't see the social reasons for things being wrong. If that makes sense. If that's what I understand, I'm not a psychologist, but my understanding is a sociopath is somebody who doesn't feel the social pressure or societal morals apply. Like, they don't really make that connection for themselves. A psychopath doesn't make connections, period. And I think that's what he is. Unintentionally, obviously, but a psychopath. He just doesn't feel, and he has no empathy whatsoever. Other people are just like cattle. Like, they have just much relevance, really. What a sad way to live. When you first met Morgana, you felt a desire to rescue her from the slave traders, did you not? You thought of someone other than yourself. I never saw that desire through, though. My thirst far overpowered anything I may have wanted to do for her. And the next time we met, I sold her to the Lord. As I said before, there's no room for interpretation in things that I have done. Whatever I might have wanted to do at one point, it's all meaningless now. Regardless, anything I do for someone else is ultimately my own benefit. Because it's what I need. No matter how selfish your motivations may ultimately be, please, let me believe some part of you does genuinely want to help her. Alright. I know it'll sound like a hypocrite for saying this, but sitting back and waiting for her to die is not what I want. When I cut off her arm, I didn't feel any of the thrill or euphoria that I usually do when I take my sword to someone. I can't say whether that means I have a conscience, but from the moment that moment, or before, but if but for a moment, or I just wasn't myself at the time. If you can save her, though, please do. I can't do anything. If I try, I'll only make things worse. I cannot do everything on my own either. Give me your word that you will atone to, Mor to Morgana for your actions. Well, I doubt making reparations will clear me of any of my crimes. If that's what you want me to do, that is what I will do. Can I ask you something? What is it? Tell me more about my next life. I want to know what kind of man I am. I want to know every mistake I make, all the details. I warn you, it's a tale far more barbaric than anything you can imagine. Do you still want to hear it? I do. And I have little doubt that I will believe it. If 
If your word I might react in a way I did earlier, I lay down my, I'll lay down my sword. You could tie me up too if you want. That won't be necessary. I am going to trust you. Freaking bold idea. I'll tell you the whole hopeless, tru tragic truth. Everything I saw with no embellishment. Please do. And so, I told him the tale I witnessed beyond the second door. That he lost his memory in a shipwreck. That he was treated like a beast by the people of the land he washed up. That he massacred countless people. And that he took the life of his lover, who would come and search for him, never wa waving, wavering in her belief that he was still alive. I told him about the white-haired girl. I told him about the things he made Giselle do. I didn't hide anything. As I spoke, he would occasionally grimace, or his eyes would go wide for a moment, but not once did he interrupt me. He sat there in silence until I finished. You weren't kidding. That was far worse than I had imagined. It is the truth, though. You become the target of Morgana's loathing, and you are led back to this mansion. That is what lies in your future. As difficult as it may be to comprehend, that person is you. The man who does all those things hundreds of years from now is you. I really am a beast. A horrendously precarious, pre precarious creature. As I interpret it, when you lost your memory, you also lost everything that you used to suppress your nature. You lost the foundation you had built, and as a result, you were no longer able to maintain the balance. Would that mean that what I am now is, comparatively speaking, human? No, I'm that different now. I have no more control over myself when I'm killing people than the man you described. You see me do reprehensible things, and in spite of that, you were never condescending or insulting, never acted disgusted or afraid of me. Are all angels as compassionate as you? I am not an angel. I was simply biting my tongue. Are you afraid of me, then? I am not afraid of you, no. What are you, then? I don't understand. I am, a, I am of the belief that now is not the appropriate time for me to allow my personal feelings to interfere with my actions. My task is to save Morgana. If I am to be honest with you for a moment, I despise the man you are in the future, but I am also equally frustrated at myself. You are right. The things you did were inexcusable. You murdered innocents. You killed the woman you came to search for you. But on a personal level, what angers me the most is that you put blood on the hands of the woman I love. I know very well that to you, it's something you haven't done yet. But it's still it was still your soul. It tears me apart inside that I couldn't return in time to stop it. You'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who wouldn't be angry to know someone they care had to receive that kind of treatment. I suppose. If that's how you feel, though, aren't you interested in taking revenge on me? As I mentioned before, there are times when allowing your emotions to take the reins is the wrong course of action. This is one of those times. Seeking vengeance is the wrong thing for me to do right now. If I can eliminate Morgana's hatred, the three of your souls can be set free as well. Oh, excuse me. So you're going to save me too? Yes, I am. Freaking cool. What a what a true hero. I mean, like, isn't that like the definition of hero? Like being willing and actually trying to save people who really not only are not good people, but just genuinely don't deserve it. Like, he's done horrendous things and he's probably not gonna stop. And yet he deserves to be able to have a, a future beyond death, you know? I don't consider myself worthy of redemption. 
Especially not after hearing about the things I will do. I'm a beast through and through. A twisted psychopathic monster. You were conflicted, though. You struggled against the creature that dwells inside you. It's true that you found perverted joy in violence and murder, but you also felt kindness, which caused a part of you to seek peace. And that said, and, that, and the same can be said of you in this time as well. Hmm. Crazy. If you actually were nothing but a beast, or rather, nothing but a man that derived pleasure in killing, maybe then I could have truly reviled you. Then you would be irredeemable, no matter what it turned, you, what that had turned you into. No matter how much pain and suffering has driven you to that point. But your instability, your constant shifting desires, your mental frailty, all appear to me to very human traits. Tell me, how should I live my life from here on? What is it you want most? I... The easiest road for me would be the one I walk now to continue being a killer. No fight, not fight, no fighting my desires, no resisting what's inside me. Would that be my salvation to abandon my humanity entirely? I don't know what I should do, what I'm supposed to do. I'm at a complete loss about everything. I would like to believe that your desire to live in peace is sincere. And that's what you want, and that's what I want for you too. It will be the most trying path, yes, but because you will have to fight against your nature to stay on it. But we live in the human world. And you also have Pauline, who wants the same thing, extending her hand for you, inviting you to join her. So I encourage you to suppress your urges. Your life will not be easy for it, but I implore you to take the rocky road. For your own sake, and for hers. Even it means that my entire life is built on a foundation of lies. Before today, I believe it was wrong not to be true to oneself. But as I listened to you tell your story, I came to realize that maybe there are exceptions. Some things you can and possibly should keep locked inside you, where they can't hurt anyone else. However, I also think you have a tendency to try and act too perfect around her, both in life and in the next. You cover up so much of yourself, you become an entirely different person. You can be confident. You can be your conflicted, impersonal self around her. The man you are right now, lost trying to find his way. I have little doubt she will accept that man. What you need most is restraint. I see. So tell me, do you think my future can be changed? I don't know for certain, so all I can do is speculate. But as you share the same soul, I expect any changes you make now will be reflected in your future incarnation. I have my work cut off for me then. Pauline, she believed in me. She pulled her faith in the beast and went out in search of him. I cannot allow myself to be the kind of monster that would murder a woman like that. Like her. I have to change. I will change for the future. You can do it. When my life here comes to an end, I vow to make the next one better. Thank you for listening to me and for giving me guidance. I can't say I'm particularly suited for the job. Knowing that my words are going to influence the direction of another's life is an unimaginable amount of pressure. I don't know. I say you pull off well enough. If you ever decide to quit being an angel, you'd make a darn convincing missionary. I have no interest in being a missionary, and as I've told you, I'm not an angel. That's too bad. I joined the Church of Michael, or Michelle, 
I don't know why I said Michael, it's just a reflex. Don't look at me like that. I'm just kidding. Now I can get angry at you? As I've been telling you, I'm an ordinary man. I'm not special in any way, like you seem to think I am. You are not ordinary. You're different, but not in the same way I am. I'm... I wouldn't ask any normal man to show me how to lead my life. I... I see. Although, what passes for normal differs from person to person, I suppose. Just as I don't think you're normal, I'm sure there are people out there who do. Perhaps. Or maybe they're just able to see my desire to be normal. Well, that's everything I have to tell you. You're going to want to talk to the Lord next, I assume. That's right. I'm going to convince him to hand over his key, and then I'm going to go see Morgana for set Morgana free. I don't think I'll have much luck convincing him of anything, but I'll help in any way I can. I appreciate it. I'll get him to come to supper tonight. You be there. You be there too. Okay, I'll be there. If I could ask you one favor, though. Could you try to arrange it for as late as possible? That should be doable, but why? There's something else I need to speak- someone else I need to speak with first. Alright. I'll do what I can. Thank you. See you this evening, then. Hmm. Well, that'll be an interesting dinner. Did I lead him on the correct path? I think he did. Will he still make bad choices? Probably. But I can hope that he can maybe change. That's kind of... It's tough, because does he deserve another chance? Not really. But knowing what he becomes, and knowing his desires now, I can't help but want him to be able to change. To find happiness that doesn't come through killing. I wonder what that makes me. I wonder what that makes you. It's so interesting because in my life, I'm a pretty strong proponent in law. Like, I think laws give structure and structure is important, but laws are meaningless if we aren't held to them, you know? Perhaps there are people who could drive safely at 90 miles an hour on, the, on, the, on some of the country roads around here, but the fact that most of us aren't means that we need to set the standard speed limit at 50 or 45 or 35 or 10 because not everyone is capable of that and the few that are well maybe they should try and just be safer for our sakes too i don't know i don't know i think michelle did a great job though very 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 happy with the way that ended will he actually find redemption at the end of it no, I made the right decision. Even if he doesn't do that, doesn't in this life, there's enough of a chance that he will in his next. One left, and that's it. I'm almost there, Giselle. I've almost made it to Morgana. I've come this far. All that's left is to speak with the Lord. Stay focused, Michelle. The piece, the pieces I have still don't fit together yet. As Morgana told it, the Lord was a cruel man from the moment she first saw him. And he wasn't much different in the, in the swordsman telling of, e of e events either. Are those portrayals a full picture of what kind of man he is? Will adding his perspective do anything but amplify Morgana's hatred? And if he really is the man, ever exactly the man I've been, he's been made out to be, then how do you explain the internal struggles from the third door? Did his core personality change with the times? Did everyone I've met be had everyone I've met been fundamentally the same though? Are you the exception? Jacopo. Hmm. Morgana's found joy in the life during the three years of the brothel. She wept about not being able to give an opportunity to say thank them. So maybe Maria is more likely to be able to assuage Morgana's animosity? I'll have to hear what she has to say. Have you forgotten that Marie, Maria in the last one flat out tried to murder him? I think he's forgetting that. Ugh. 
can barely move my right arm. I can't feel my fingers at all. It burns. I've managed this long, but dang it, it doesn't hurt. Huh. He's gonna fall asleep again, isn't he? Yep, here we go, back into Wonderland. Hmm. The question now is this or nothing? Or stopping here or continuing on? I think we can do a little more. Why must you hand out miracles for nothing? I know that voice. I'm looking up at someone. A woman. She's draped in a black fog. I can't make out any details. But even through the darkness, I know immediately who she is. She is mother. My... No, she's not my mother. She is... Why would you ask such a question, mother? We're barely holding on as it is, my dear. It's not wrong to expect a little re remuneration for our services. No, mother, it is wrong. Miracles are not meant to be bartered for. God the Father does not charge us for his miracles. So why should we, when I'm only borrowing his power? Listen to me, Morgana. Every time you give someone a blessing, you're hurting yourself. If not for the miracle itself, you still deserve some degree of compensation for the pain. I know you're concerned for me, Mother, and I appreciate it very much. But I'm happy with the way things are. I'm happy being able to help others with my Heavenly Father's power. A power you won't have much longer, my dear, if we can't afford to keep ourselves fed. I'm a saint, aren't I? Yes, you're my sweet little saint. God will not forsake his saints. No matter how difficult it may get, he will always provide me a way to continue doing his work. And you are the mother of that saint, aren't you? Yes, that's right. I conceived you unattainted by the hands of man. Then you must respect his will as, as, as well, mother. It must be our highest priority. You're right. I was wrong, my dear saint. Mother? Mother? You agreed with me. You said I was right. So why are you taking money from that man? Mother? Mother looks over at a strange men shove me into a carriage. They lock. They look into the, her eyes, sending a chill down my spine. I see her lips moving. She doesn't actually say the words out loud, but I can make out every individual syllable. Because you're worthless to me. Fetch. That sucks. Welcome, daughter of God. You'll be performing miracles for me now. And if you cooperate, I can guarantee you'll live more than comfortably. Miracles are not something to be performed for one single person's benefit. What? Miracles are not magic or parlor tricks. They are a precious gift granted by my to me by my father in heaven. Using his power for personal gratification is a grave sin. I will not do such thing. I entreat you to think long and hard about your actions. Do away with such selfish desires and dedicate yourself to helping the people. The power you have been given was bestowed upon you by the hand of God. It is not your power. He is merely allowing you to make use of it for a short time. Pride is a sin. Please consider how to conduct yourself. You're an, an, an ignorant, insolent child, aren't you? I bought you. You are my property. You have no right to an opinion. That is not my opinion. That is the way the world is, as God. Silence! You will not talk here. You you will not. No, you are not to talk here. And blah. You're not here to talk. You are here to perform miracles for me and my guests. As I've already told you, I will do no such thing. What you what you will or will not do is my decision, not yours. The Lord says with a sickening laugh, then grabs me by the hair and knocks me to the floor. 
I beg him to stop, but he isn't listening to the words I say. Cheers! I say it's blood and good fortune to all. I stare vaguely out of the crowd gathering at the fort for the Lord's blood feast. Oh my neck. Every time he every time he has his guests, he throws another party, and every time he slices another part of my arms or legs open. It isn't long before they're on sightly web of crisscrossing scars. The Lord sometimes has trouble deciding where to cut, but not a, any sense of sympathy for me. He simply thinks drawing blood from untouched areas of my body will make it more effective. The Lord strips me bare. Perhaps I'll use your stomach today, Saint. I should be able to get some nice pure blood from there. Stop this. Can you not comprehend what you're doing is an affront to the Lord? I'm free to do what I wish with my property. Saint or not, you are no different than any of my slaves. The Lord is greatly displeased with your actions. Then use your miracle powers to deliver divine punishment on me. Go on. You can do that, can't you? Your soul will be punished. You may not see the effects now, but you will pay for your sins one day. Ha! Huh. You're not as threatening as you think you are, buck-naked girl. <sighs> Don't give me that look, girl. I have no interest in taking that from you. You'd be lucky to find anyone willing to lay a finger on a girl covered in disgusting scars. <sighs> All I can do is wait and endure day after day as the torture and shame of the Lord searching for new places to stick his knife. My entire body except for my face is covered in reddish-black wounds. Someone? Anyone? Help me. Get me out of here. Please. Someone? Oh, Father who art in heaven, I pray for you to lead me into deliverance. Father, your trials, they are much too great. Fetch. I think that's where we're going to end for today. It's a very depressing end, but it's good to have that perspective again of what she went through. And that Lord. I wonder if that was Jacopo's dad. It explained how he knows about her. Why he's still around and young. Yeah, I think that's what it is. If not dad, then predecessor at the very least. But likely a, a father figure. Because Jacopo didn't have a great relation with his father, but when his father died, he was like, he was like destined to inherit. So yeah, I think that was his father. But yeah, we'll have to see what happens next time. Hopefully we'll be able to confront the Lord and get the final chapter of excuses over with. And then finally, finally we can perhaps free Morgana. And see what we can make of ourselves throughout all these trials and decisions we've made. Uh, but for now, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for joining me on the channel. As always, it's a pleasure having you here. I look forward to reading your comments on this one. like hearing your thoughts and uh, getting ready for March to be over. What a crazy month it's been. And let's see how April turns out. Oh boy. But anyway, thank you so much for being here today. And until the next video you watch with me, I hope to see me next. I'll see you there.